Welcome back everyone to another video about the Fuel EXE. This one we're going to talk in depth a little bit more about the newest models that have been released in the alloy. Currently we are riding the Fuel EXE 9.8. So this is a carbon model but essentially everything's the same. The layout, the controls, everything you can see up front here. We're in mode 3 on this ride and we'll be doing it most of it. We'll play around a little bit. It does change pretty easy and all these controls are the same between the two so you've got your controls on your left side thumb control there and then that shows you exactly what you're doing there there's a few different windows to view and essentially they give you wattages and speeds and ranges as you change and go up and down as you can see there if it's clear enough but no matter which fuel exe you get you get the same electric system with these ones they're now adding an alloy version too so that is just a big money savings these already ride great as you can see they handle fantastically you don't notice the weight there isn't much notice in the weight anyway from e-bikes but if you can shave a chunk off by removing that big battery and that big motor it does ride significantly better i really had a good time on the 9.8 and although it was up there in price, I didn't think the 9 point series, so they start at 9.5, started crazy high anyway. It was a pretty entry level price for electric mountain bikes, especially in carbon. Now, with the new alloy models, they've actually came out with a Fuel EXE 5. So this is their most entry level point, and that's around $7,400 which is not too bad now what do you get for that let's go over it a little bit again you do get the same tq motor and the same battery that you'll get all the way up the high end ones so that's important to know that's nice to know it's good to know that no matter which e-bike you're getting the e-bike version of it is the same we're really just changing some of the bicycle spec things now you still have that same updated frame geometry for the new fuel axis so it's 150 mil on the front and you can fit 160 if you want which is nice or it's already got enough suspension travel so it's not like it's it's underpowered for suspension now in the fuel x5 the front fork is a rock sharks recon silver this is a solo air spring so it's it's good there's nothing crazy fancy about it under the big power and big hits you're definitely gonna see a bit less performance so what would you notice in that in an actual real term sake after riding many bikes throughout my kind of biking career really it's how fast it reacts and how long it can keep up as temperatures increase seals get less effective it gets a little more sloppy through really rutted out fast harsh aggressive stuff it will slowly kind of lose its efficiencies and not be able to kind of keep up so it'll just become rougher not that big of a deal though in my mind in the back end it has the x fusion pro 2 this has two position kind of a firm and a kind of trail soft mode so you'll have no problem controlling that compared to a three position one you know it, they do have more features but it it's not like a life and death kind of situation two position is really all you need and honestly with the efficiency of even an entry level shock like that it's pretty efficient for today's sake of fork i'm never really concerned with the performance of my fork in the back end for shifting now this is where it gets i don't know this is where they'd really cheap out but it's not really super cheap you do get 12 speed which is pretty critical on today's bikes especially over seven thousand dollars you could see them cheaping out giving you a 10 but you are getting the shimano dior 12 speed setup this honestly shifts great it shifts really respectively i've rode it on many other bikes before and you know as you go up from that dior dior xt it's not like a huge jump in quality there is definitely a snappiness to the higher end stuff but it's not it's definitely not a big deal this is a good shifting set now they don't have the dior front end it is e13 but i think that's pretty similar throughout the whole fuel exe line because of that tq motor not that big of a deal 
It comes with a 34 tooth as a max and a 30 tooth as a minimum on the front ring, but it comes stock with a 32 to begin with. So I don't know if you'd really need to change it. With an e-bike, I guess it depends a little bit. Part of me sees a lot of people wanting to upgrade to a 34, so you'll be able to get a little more top end speed out. You'll naturally be up those speeds anyway, and you have the electric assist to kind of keep up anyway. Seat post wise on the Fuel EX E5, it has a Trans X. It's the 34.9 seat post. So it's a little chunkier, a little thicker. This goes up and down super nice. It's significantly better than those early renditions of the Trans X stuff. It's way better than it was. Braking wise, this is where some people could see a bit of a cost savings. I don't think it's that big of a deal again. It is the Tektro four piston hydraulic brakes so the m745s honestly with this level of bike every part you get with it is is great i'm not really too concerned with any of the parts i've seen on the list here i've rode pretty much all of them on different bikes and it's all good stuff overall weight for the fuel ex e5 is 45 pounds which is still super lightweight for an e-bike we have a 360 watt battery in there that lightweight motor overall it just rides well and it will perform really well now what would be the downsides to something like this essentially you have a more basic frame made of aluminum but it's reinforced and built strong enough to be able to hold a battery in there so any downsides of aluminum potentially not being as stiff as carbon already gets a little canceled out. And I said this in my 9.8 video, because carbon is made to be stiffer and lighter, there's benefits to it. But if you've got to create a housing that is strong enough that the bike survives with or without a battery in it, that means the aluminum one's going to be pretty much just as strong. So then the weight savings, well, you're on an e-bike and it's 45 pounds, so it's pretty good for an e-bike anyway. I honestly don't see a downside to this bike. I wish I could. I wish I'd say, no, you got to go up, you know. It comes with tubeless ready rims, but not tubeless ready tires. Eh, not that big of a deal, honestly. Like, tubeless is nice, but it's something you could upgrade very easily to in the future as you wear those out. And it's not like I burn through tubes all the time when I had tubes. I do think that one will be an extremely popular selling model just because of the spec it comes with. There's no real big downsides. Anyone who is an experienced mountain biker, you know, there are better bikes out there. The next level up, you've got the Fuel EXE 8 in two models, one with GX Axis and one with the XT. Now, overall, all the parts also get upgraded. So your rear shock especially is a huge upgrade, getting that little piggyback on it. So you're able to take those hits a lot bigger. The little chattery stuff is gonna control better and overall it will just work better. Still only a two position dampener because it's the new Fox Performance Float, but it's still gonna perform better than the X-Fusion in the long term kind of things. The front fork is the Rhythm 36, which again, is going to be a little more customizable and it's going to hold up better over that more aggressive stuff more chattery stuff bigger stuff but it's the same amount of travel same everything in other ways wheels come as a bontrager line comp 30s and tubeless ready which is nice if you like tubeless with a better tire obviously you can get the xr5 team issue instead of the xt3 so like the xr5 team issue this is the really the big two differences the XR5 team issue is beefier, more aggressive, definitely more off-road. The XT3, I actually like that tire a lot. It's a little more XC-like. So if you're ripping around like I did, I rode out to this trail system, it's going to actually be a better tire for all-purpose mountain biking. It's going to roll really fast. But in that heavier, chunkier downhill enduro we kind of style, it's not going to have as much traction. So it might lean more to where you're riding the bike. If you're going more downhill, more aggressive on the downhills, obviously a Fuel EX E8 would be a better choice. Regardless of which shifting set you choose, it's just going to be a better choice. 
But if you're just an average rider getting out there, hitting the hills, learning it, or just getting the flow of things, you don't go crazy fast downhill or anything like that, you're not going to have any traction issues apart from the muddiest of days or soft sand. You know, you're going to be no problem with that tire and suspension setup. And again, the shifting is fine, the brakes are fine. It really just isn't that big of a deal. Price wise, you do go up a little bit, obviously, and it's not crazy, but it is a jump. To get to the XT stuff, you're going with 8,700, and to go to the Axis stuff, so this is GX Axis wireless electronic, shifts fantastically. You go into 92. Downside to the GX Axis stuff is it does not have a built in wire or anything, it's not a smart system. So unfortunately you do have a battery for your derailleur and your bike battery. So now you're just adding more batteries that you've got to maintain and charge. This 9.8 amp riding here has a uh, GX axis or an axis dropper post on it. So that's something we have to make sure is charged and ready to go. It's easier for this model because then it goes up and down. It wasn't stuck with it, but it goes up and down easier without fiddling with the cable. And that is a nice little feature. The Fuel EXE alloys, I think, will be a strong seller. They come in a high-end part spec in the 8 model that even a confident, experienced biker will be pleased with. And for anyone new or that less aggressive rider, the 5 is extremely well specced. Comparatively to the 9.5, Part spec wise, very similar. Price wise, it is a savings. And would I recommend people go to a 9.5? Hmm, I'm not really sure at this point. Is it a better bike? I really do question that. I think anyone who buys a Fuel EX E5, such a long name to say, anyone who buys that who is just riding, getting out there, your average Joe, nothing too crazy you're going to be blown away with, and I don't see many reasons to upgrade anything on it. Tire choice is more of a personal thing, so that's something you can change down the line. There could be someone who buys the 9.8 or 9.9 and be like, this is way too aggressive of a tire for me. I just want a faster rolling XC tire. These bikes do handle very, very well. If you want a little better spec-wise in suspension, Shifting is a little bit better. Brakes you would notice. So you really brakes and suspension. The 8 is a good value. It's getting up there in price. Especially once you add the electronic drivetrain to it. But the XT model. Fantastic option for someone who is looking to keep up with where they were at. They were already an experienced rider. They want a good bike. They want something to perform very well. Continuously. No matter where they take it or what they do with it whereas the exe is always going to be a bit of a hold back kind of bike i wouldn't be concerned about ripping around town doing the light trails you know some of this stuff i'm doing here there is no need to be on a 9.8 but i don't see any downside to riding a 9.5 or even a fuel exe5 on this one so as we look at this whole range of bikes Obviously, the carbon bikes, electric or not, were always a little bougie, but I saw a huge performance in control, stiffness, and rideability. It is comfier. Vibration is absorbed by carbon, so you will lose a little bit of that. But ride control, I really truly think, will be an interesting one. I don't know if you'll see that big of a difference. They're going to be a quiet e-bike with really good handling, and it's a much cheaper price. I think you'll see a lot more people lean this way. Where the Fuel EXE stands is still a bit confusing to me. To anyone who was a mountain biker, I feel like this is a bike you could buy and replace your mountain bike with. Whereas the bigger e-bikes like the rails and the power plies, those ones, these people aren't riding regular bikes. Or they weren't riding regular bikes and they want to get back into it or it's not really the same category. The Fuel XEs are mountain bikes, the other ones are e-bikes. 
that's how I truly look at it. It makes sense to me, and it's a good option. I really don't think no matter what option you choose, 9.5, 9.8, 5, or just 8 in the fuel EXEs, you're going to be disappointed. But dollar for dollar spend, or however you want to look at it, the 5 and the 8 are excellent. Really, really well priced. I really think there's not much changes you'd need to do to it. I really think you'd really enjoy this. And this category of bike is expanding. Santa Cruz just released their Heckler SL with the Fazua system. So the lightweight e-bike kind of trend is definitely growing. People want a mountain bike which they can throw around. They just want to climb a little faster. They just want to get places a little faster. Even riding out to the hills. So there's a 14k loop here. You know, sometimes you want to take the full 14k. Sometimes you just want to get out there a little faster. But you don't feel like driving and loading up. You still want to get some work in. It's definitely beneficial that way. The Fuel XE. I think is a cool bike. I like it. I really enjoyed riding it here. It does feel like a mountain bike. It does have a bit more weight to it if you were wondering. They are not as silent as Trek I think advertises. I'm sure scientifically they are. They put some random number which I've never even heard. Level of sound is like point something you know. But you can still hear it in the high modes when you're pedaling hard. You can hear the whine. Definitely in the low modes compared to the bigger motors they're quiet. But it's not like it's a completely silent bike. You 100% know you're riding an e-bike and most importantly you can feel it which is pretty critical. With these bikes if you check out my 9.8 story these bikes they do ride really well and their customization is excellent in the electronic side of things. The app works really well and that's all compatible throughout the whole Fuel EXE range. The Trek Central app works really well for customizing it for yourself all right guys hopefully this kind of clears it up it's a quick one they're very simple bikes there's not much to them and honestly it's not like you need to break down how good or how bad the parts are they're all really good they don't really make what i call an entry level even though the five is in the number and that normally represents them all entry level stuff 12 speed good suspension and it's the same electronic system with a high quality aluminum frame. You're not going to go wrong with this Trek product at all. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And click the link below if you want to buy one. And maybe you can send me a small commission for it. Thank you guys. And subscribe.